So I wanted to talk a little bit about the Incretin mimetics and the concern for diabetic retinopathy. That is something that has been discussed uh, in particular since the uh, semaglutide, uh, ozempic Wegovy, and then of course the chirzepatide, Manjaro, and Zepbound have come out in the past couple of years and in um, the past year, very specifically with the chirzepatide. So these incretin mimetics have been around actually a lot longer than just the semaglutide, semaglutide, however you want to pronounce it, and the chirzepatide. We've had the exenatide, bieta, we have liraglutide um, injection, the victoza, that's been around for a while. And then now, of course, the semaglutide, ozempic, wegovy, and certainly the chirzepatide. Manjaro Zep bound. So these are not new agents. And certainly treating diabetes is, is not a new concept by any stretch of the imagination. So this is just some of the advertising for Wegovy and Ozempic. The same company that makes Ozempic does make Wegovy. Mechanistically, these drugs are game changers for metabolic disease, whether we're talking type 2 diabetes or really, um, you know, the obesity epidemic. Um, the latest statistic says that less than 7% of people in the United States are metabolically healthy. So these are life-changing, life-saving medications for a lot of patients. But for patients that are using them very specifically for type 2 diabetes, you know, there are some things that we have to watch in terms of adverse effects. And the two that I want to concentrate on tonight are really the diabetic retinopathy and then the newer concern potentially for an associated risk um, when using these medications with non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So let's um, get right into that. Here's chirzepatide, Manjaro. Um, these agents are in Cretan mimetics. They are both uh, plugging into receptors on the glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor acting as agonists, which is why they're called mimetics, which just means to mimic. Now, chirzepatide, Manjaro, as well as the Zepbound, um, you know, Zepbound actually changed this statement. So Tirzepatide Zepbound is now indicated for weight loss with this medication. But this one's a little bit different because it has a, a dual mechanism. It also is enhancing glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide. So we're seeing some great results with that medication as well. So as an adverse effect uh, question and perspective, this is what's popped up. Um, you know, some of the initial data, very very specifically with semaglutide, because it's been out for longer than terzepatide, um, you know, maybe showed some worsening of diabetic retinopathy. And, um, you know, very specifically for semaglutide, this has been evaluated since 2018. And, you know, it does really have a reasonable explanation. Um, and that has to do with, uh, you know, basically any drug that's that's precipitously um, lowering blood glucose compared to placebo can cause a worsening in diabetic retinopathy. And, and very specifically, I shouldn't have said in placebo, but when semaglutide was compared to placebo um, in some observational and even retrospective data, you know, maybe there was a worsening of diabetic retinopathy in some patients. The biggest problem was that the original studies um, that were being used to evaluate semaglutide, semaglutide, um, you know, as a drug uh, in order for it to be approved by the Food and Drug Administration, didn't assess diabetic retinopathy. So they were sort of, you know, trying to backdoor their way into some of the data. So we need better prospective data. The newest one that's popped up, the newest concern is this um, JAMA ophthalmology report manuscript from this past summer of 2024 that said that there was a fourfold increase in patients taking semaglutide um, where they saw uh, an increase, fourfold uh, increase in um, non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So that in particular, I will say here that we need more information. Um, you know, it's a, it's a vascular disease. Diabetes is a vascular disease. Um, we need more information uh, for sure uh, with, with that. So what about diabetic retinopathy and these GLP-1 receptor agonists? So um, we've seen a worsening in diabetic retinopathy in patients with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes over time. And we've seen a worsening of diabetic retinopathy in patients that have undergone weight loss surgery, for example, gastric bypass um, or bariatric surgery. And we've also seen a worsening of diabetic retinopathy in pregnant patients, um, you know, over time. 
that had diabetes or gestational diabetes and now they've given birth. With drug therapy in particular, because that's what we're hitting here for sure, and that's my jurisdiction as a, a PharmD, Diabetic retinopathy is seen in patients receiving many of our anti-diabetic agents, including, um, you know, intensive insulin therapy, those using sulfonylureas like glipizide, gliburide, glimepiride, those using the thiazole adenodions uh, like pioglitazone, actose, and then now, of course, in our glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists, semaglutide ozempic wegovi, terzepatide monjaro, zepbound. So mechanistically, um, you know, there is an association with rapid improvement in hyperglycemia and probably, you know, maybe the severity of the pre-existing diabetes-related retinopathy plays a role as well. So, um, you know, describing the mechanism, I liked this one the best because it's it's short, but it gives you kind of the basic picture. We know that uh, hypoglycemia is more associated with an acute worsening of diabetic retinopathy. And it's essentially the cells in the central retina were not able to meet their metabolic demands due to decreased supply of glucose, as well as decreased production of endogenous glucose by like glycolytic pathways. So basically, the retina is being starved of nutrients and energy. Um, that's kind of a good way to describe it. But we know that that long term hyperglycemia is certainly going to be something that is uh, significant for worsening of diabetic retinopathy. So the mechanism of action here uh, proposed or otherwise, um, I've given you the uh, one one place where you can look, I thought it was a great kind of basic science journal and manuscript that gave a good discussion. So, you know, the best minds in um, optometry and, and even ophthalmology say that even with the potential for the initial progression of retinopathy, intensive improvement in glycemic control reduces the risk for onset and progression of diabetic retinopathy over time. And, that, and that's what I was alluding to on the previous slide. You know, it's kind of a, a great perspective, even though I spelled perspective wrong, um, that, you know, we have to look at the short game as well as the long game, you know. So this concern over worsening of diabetic retinopathy in the first 16 weeks of therapy in patients taking what very specifically was semaglutide, and we're assuming it will be with the terzepatide as well, you know, there are some uh, good guidelines out there for eye physicians, so basically, patients with new onset type 2 diabetes should have a comprehensive eye exam, um, you know, at baseline and then annually at a minimum. Um, consider retinopathy status at the initiation of treatment with the semaglutide, ozempic, wegovi, and terzepatide, manjaro, zepbound. Follow the guidelines for monitoring patients with established retinopathy. This is some of the initial data. Um, you know, showing specifically that the sustained six trial, you know, didn't really assess diabetic retinopathy. We've known about diabetic retinopathy with anti-diabetic agents for a long time. Um, this focus trial is going to give us a lot more data. It's looking at 1,500 patients with a hemoglobin A1C between 7 and 10%, and it's assessing um, the one milligram of semaglutide versus placebo um, over the course of five years. So we're expecting the data from this to uh, be released you know, sometime in 2027. That's going to give us a lot more on for, uh, information. This was uh, just some real-world data, and a lot of um, practitioners are are kind of gathering this retrospective um, or observational type data. This was um, from a journal, uh, it was called The Ophthalmologist. I guess it's not really a journal, but it was just kind of a, a short opinion piece looking at diabetic retinopathy. So basically, um, it was looking very specifically at semaglutide because that the one that's the one that's been around longer. Um, the hypothesis was if worsening of diabetic retinopathy occurs with semaglutide, 
orchard's appetite, et cetera. It is temporary, not associated with continued diabetic retinopathy progression. So I liked this one because it was pretty succinct. There were 87 patients in this retrospective analysis of data. Um, they were evaluated over one year. Average age was 62 with a range of 38 to 84. I think it was 40% women, 60% um, males. Baseline levels of diabetic retinopathy were ranging, you know, from mild to severe. So very specifically, 11.5% of mild non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, moderate uh, non-proliferative was 38.5%, and severe non-proliferative was 14.4%, and then 35.6% of patients had proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So um, after uh, the analysis of one year, level of retinopathy progressed in 5.7% of eyes, remained stable in 86.2% of eyes, and improved in 8% of eyes. And, you know, overall, the visual acuity remained un unchanged in these patients over time. Semaglutide was, uh, use was not associated with increased risk of progression of diabetic retinopathy, visual loss, or an increased number of intravitreal injections of um, anti-VEGF medications over the 12-month period. So certainly we need more uh, prospective clinical trials, and that's what's coming with the FOCUS trial um, with the semaglutide, and then we'll get some tirzepatide uh, information as well. That's what we need. So again, this isn't a surprising finding. Um, I think it just became such a big deal recently because of just the, the gangbuster results for improvement in type 2 diabetes and certainly for weight loss in uh, patients, you know, without type 2 diabetes. So, you know, good direction until we get all of this data is just, you know, a screening at baseline uh, or, or a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes in patients, um, and then, you know, assessing retinopathy if they have it and watching it. So it's basically uh, worsening, transient worsening in diabetic retinopathy is the concern over the first 16 weeks of use of these agents. Um, and I would say that probably the other thing to consider is, we, we tend to increase the dose of the semaglutide uh, ozempic Wegovi as well as the tirzepatide Manjaro uh, or Zepbound. So you, you, know, you start at the lowest dose and if you're tolerating it in terms of nausea, vomiting type symptoms, then you increase to the next dose. You double the dose um, you know, as soon as you can, a week after you start the first dose, lowest dose, a week later, you can, you know, double the dose. If you're still doing well, you can double the dose again. And, you know, within three to four weeks, a patient might be at max dose of these agents if that's the goal. So, you know, one thing to consider is certainly interfacing with a practitioner that is um, prescribing the, the weight loss and type 2 diabetes um, biologics, semaglutide, enterzepatide, and or terzepatide. And also um, slowing down the dose escalation is probably a, another reasonable thing to consider. So rather than just paying attention to the nausea and vomiting associated with these agents and whether or not somebody is suffering from that, um, you know, as, as the gauge to double the dose, maybe just saying, all right, we're going to start with the lowest dose on a Monday. And, you know, if two to three weeks from now, um, you're, you're feeling good and your diabetic retinopathy seems okay, then we'll go to the next dose. And then maybe another two, three, four weeks later, then you increase the dose again. So just a more slow, steady increase uh, in dose for patients. Let me know if you have any questions and you can reach out.